I'm going to start the flange command here and the first thing you'll notice is that it no longer has a dialog box and they've transitioned this feature to the properties panel. This is a significant change. Um, it still offers all the same functionality and uh, it's just grouped differently. Um, I do find that just in working with it for some time now that I find it very intuitive. So just have to kind of bear with it and uh, you'll be able to get through it no problem. So what I want to do is just show you a little exercise here and I'm going to start by creating some um, flange edge sets. Uh, you can see here on the input geometry area of the panel that I have by default the edge option selected. That simply means that I'm going to be creating my flange along the entire length of the edge. Um, if you wanted to customize that, you could create it with a specific width. You can do it between two selected points, or, or you can do it as offset. So the four different options are available here to create your customized um, flange edge. So I'm going to make a selection here within the um, the window, uh, I'm going to select this edge and you can see by default it adds it at 25 millimeters. I'm going to create a second edge. I uh, Sorry, I'm going to select a second edge here and you can see that it also assigns the same 25 millimeters to the length. You can see here that in the flange properties panel it says there's two edges selected and that is considered one set. And the reason that's a set now is that I can make a modification to this value and it changes both. Uh, to modify those values, you can use all of the options in this height extents area. So I've already just changed it to a 15 millimeter. I can flip the direction of my flange. And then all of your measurement options are here as well. So depending on how you're gonna measure that, um, that flange. And these options were all available as well in your um, previous 2024 dialog box. The biggest difference is that now they're all icon based and to kind of review what they are, you can just simply hover over the different option. It's going to tell you how it's measuring that flange. So I'm going to leave that as is and I'm going to um, go up here now and add a second set. So this means that I can add additional edges to the same feature and it can actually have different um, length options. So I can use, let's say for this next one, a different length setting than what I had done previously that it used the full edge. So you can see here now I have a brand new set here and this one I'm actually going to use the between option. And this allows me to select between two edges or sorry, between any two references. So you can see that the dialog box, you can see that the properties panel has expanded to give a from and to field. And I'm gonna actually um, select this edge as my flange edge. And then my two reference points are gonna be here and here. And you can see now that that new um, edge has been created. So you can see that it has, um, given it the same height and extents options. Uh, it will also do the, um, the same direction option. So that's all tied together within the one feature. Now, if you wanted to have, say, that um, between edge with a different height, you would have to create a brand new flange. But this enables you to create multiple sets of edges using the different um, measurement types to define the length of that flange. The angle and placement area as well, I can go down here and simply change my, my angles. So you can see, I see here I have a 40 degree angle now on my flanges. And again, there's all these placement options to define how that, um, that angle is being measured. All of those options again were available in the old functionality with the dialog box. It's now just really nicely grouped into these different areas. So to continue here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click OK and I'm going to create that flange and you can see that it's added into my model browser. I'm going to go in and create a second flange feature here and I'm going to just do this a little bit different. Instead of selecting individual edges, I want to show you the loop command. So I know that many people use the loop command and that functionality is still available and you can see here I have it selected on the properties panel. I can select that loop feature and then I can go in, I can select a loop of edges and you can see I have it here on my, um, my model. I'm gonna extend this a little bit so we can see it. 
this is actually a really good point here. You can see that by default, it accepts and uses the exact same options that were set in the previous flange feature. So I have that 15 millimeter height. I'm gonna reduce that down to, let's say, uh, nine. And here I'm going to not uh, have a 40 degree. I'm going to go back to my 90 degrees. So here we can see now there's no overlapping between any of those features. I'm going to actually reduce this just a little bit more so it's a bit smaller. Um, and then you can see what it's done there. If I go up to the input geometry area, you can see that four edges were selected in that set. So that was the loop of the four edges. Um, I also could set a width value there. So instead of having them go across the entire width of those loops, that loop, those loops edges, I could make those a little bit smaller and you can see how that is, uh, is created. So I'm gonna click okay here and you can see how, how that geometry would be created in my model. I wanna actually go back and I wanna show you how easy it is also to just make a change here. So I'm gonna go in and do an edit feature on that first flange and I'm gonna delete that second edge here. So you can see here, I could just have to select that X on the, uh, in that row and it will remove that from the, uh, from the set and I can select okay. So, you know, I don't have to delete the feature or recreate it. It's simply a, um, a selection of the, a deletion of the edge selection. And to continue, I just wanted to go back and actually edit this again. And what I want to talk about are the uh, bottom two areas here, the bend properties and the corner defaults. So I'm going to start with bend properties. So I'm going to compress the corner defaults, expand bend properties. And here you can see that this is allowing you to customize the bend properties for the selected edge. So you can see right here, this is the selected uh, flange edge set and any changes that I'd make to the bend properties would affect that. So here I am able to go in, make changes to the bend radius. Right now it's reading the default value. I could change the relief shape, uh, unfold rule, all of those options. And previously those commands were only available if you selected the little icon that was actually on the edge. So now it's a little bit more intuitive. It's tied directly into the properties panel and is available for the selected edge set. If you had multiple edge sets, you could simply select on the edge set and make your modifications. So I'm going to minimize that. I'm not going to make any changes to the bend properties and I'm going to go into the corner defaults. And this is where you'll find the auto mitering. So you can see by default that is enabled. If I was to disable it, you can see how uh, the mitering is turned off. And by default, the miter gap size is uh, set again to the default value that's assigned through the defaults in the sheet metal part. Um, I can also affect and change the corner settings. So the corner um, settings here being for, um, by default, being trimmed to bend. I could change that to um, the round corner relief or let's say the square corner relief. And you can see that when I click OK, it would update to that, uh, that relief shape. So that's really what I wanted to explain here. As you can tell, the dialog box has uh, been totally replaced. And now with this new flange uh, properties panel, you have all the commands easily accessible. Um, biggest tip I can give is definitely work at hovering over each of the commands to find out exactly what it is. And if you're interested, the learning guide for 2025 sheet metal has been updated and all of the functionality is discussed in uh, the flange chapter, which is chapter four of that guide. Thanks so much.